Hello. Uh, dobry dan, dobry kolegi. Uh, my name is Michael uh, or Mikhail, which is in Russian and it's probably closer to Serbian. Uh, I'm really happy to be here in Belgrade uh, in, this, in this wonderful group for the first time in my life in, in Serbia. Uh, before I start, I want to say a couple of words about myself. Uh, it is important because comparing to yesterday, well, you, you had mostly advertising people and creative people, uh, you know, some, some great companies. Uh, I have only background in PR. Even a wonderful Gabriela uh, uh, from uh, Romania, she has both uh, PR and advertising background. I'm just PR. And uh, that's why I'm probably, uh, uh, will be, you know, when I will be covering the topic of today's, you know, presentation, uh, you can imagine that the outcome will be, yes, it is PR, but uh, it's, you know, probably stepping one, you know, uh, way too far. Uh, when I was uh, talking, you know, to Ivana and the organizers about, you know, some logistics preparing the event, they said, okay, you will be wearing a Madonna microphone. I said, well, wait a minute. Uh, I, honestly, I have not heard of the Madonna microphone before, and I feel a little bit like a cosmonaut today uh, with, with this wiring around my head. Uh, and I said, There's, you know, and I, first of all, I went to Google and Googled what is Madonna microphone. And then there was this image coming up. I said, there's no way I will look like that uh, in a group in Serbia. Uh, so I'm you know, dressed in a, in a boring gray uh, jacket, uh, which is my you know, more kind of normal uh, daily attire. A couple of words about what is Battle Royale. For those of you who are not into computer gaming, uh, well, this is a video game uh, genre that uh, blends the survival, exploration, and uh, uh, essentially, it's a survival game uh, where there is a number of combatants involved and only one fighter remains standing. And I will leave you for you to guess, you know, who is uh, out of the three here, out of the three characters here, is from PR, who is from advertising, and the third one, I don't know where from. Uh, so, you know, looking at, you know, the influencer marketing or influencer, you know, relationship building, you know, as we were calling this, you know, way. It's a red hot topic now, uh, and it's also an area uh, which, you know, has a lot of confusion and complexity now. Even though, uh, you know, we've been, you know, doing the influencer marketing um, in, in, in a way, uh, you know, for many, many years. In fact, you know, PR has always worked with ambassadors and celebrities, uh, uh, we would not always call them influencers back then, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago. Um, and uh, the, the big difference, obviously, was that uh, they were not uh, uh, in social media because there was no social media as such. Uh, but now, uh, you know, it, it's all uh, uh, changing as, you know, the, the, our whole world is changing. And uh, we see that there's more and more uh, influencers are in the social media and digital, and uh, it's important to mention that uh, uh, influencer marketing requires relationships and conversations. That's exactly what PR does, uh, and, uh, and also, you know, the influencers uh, invite the, the quality, the good influencers invite brands only if they fit and if the brand inclusion, in most cases, is not scripted, because otherwise uh, they will lose uh, their cloud and they will lose their friends. Uh, very very soon. So uh, you know the new influencers, those that are you know coming uh, to the surface with the you know digital age, the social media age, uh, uh, they they are they own brands. Uh, they, there is uh, um, you know being at you know bloggers, video bloggers or vloggers as you know we call them. Uh, or if we go even further with the so-called so the social uh, the, the the citizen journalism. Uh, uh, every influencer is its own brand, and uh, so it's, 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 it's an entirely new breed of influencers, and with the development of digital, with the development of new social media channels, there is more and more coming, and there's new, uh, more opportunities coming. But also it's important to mention that the whole media landscape is changing, obviously, uh, which undermines uh, the very basics of PR, because, you know, you would ask, uh, you know, anybody, especially for those outside of the PR world, what is PR? Well, it's, you know, sending out press releases and talking to journalists. Uh, there's very interesting numbers here that I found recently. 
the British Labour Force Survey uh, sh uh, showed that in 2017, the number of journalists in the UK dropped by 13%, which is m around 11,000 people. But for the same time, which is uh, the most bizarre thing actually, the number of PR practitioners in increased by 5,000. And this is, you know, com complete nonsense, you might think, because, uh, okay, you know, the, uh, the, the core uh, of the PR profession, the media is dying, uh, or is going into social media, is going into digital, uh, uh, and uh, for the same time, you know, PR people is growing in numbers. And, okay, maybe some of the journalists have migrated into PR, but it does not uh, answer the question of what's going on. You know, and with all the fake, you know, uh, you know fake news and post-truth, uh, you know, concepts, yes, the media is quite different now. Uh, in another interesting number, and it's very difficult to turn my head with, uh, <laughs> with the wiring. Uh, another interesting number is that, you know, for the uh, younger audiences, uh, uh, you know, you know, it's 9.5% it's uh, reduction uh, uh, of uh, TV audience. And... Uh, you know, this is also a very interesting finding. Uh, I have, you know, two 17-year-old boys at home. Uh, they hardly watch television at all. They don't read newspapers. Uh, I can't remember when they had, like, a real magazine in their hands. So how do you reach these people? Uh, and those who are 18, 17, maybe 20 years old, uh, they already have money that they can spend on, on goods and services. Uh, they have already economic freedoms. Uh, and, uh, you know, a client might ask, so if I have a news to communicate, whether I should, you know, send a press release or go to Facebook? And the answer probably be, well, neither. If you want to talk to those, you know, who are 18, 20 year olds, uh, you know, you need to go to YouTube because they're all, uh, you know, watching videos. You need to go to, uh, uh, for example, Russian uh, network Vkontakte. Uh, which is probably not here, but you know it's uh, you know roughly an analog of fa Facebook, also very heavy on videos. You might want to go to Snapchat, uh, and it's again a very different story. But also, what's interesting is that we, we we face a unique time now when there's five generations are economically active on the market, ranging from the generation Z of the 18, 20 year olds uh, to the age you know of say you know 65, 70 year olds. You know my parents, for example, or your grandparents and parents um, and in everybody in, in between, and they have very different uh, information consumption habits. So it's also influencing uh, uh, what's happening. And, uh, and yes, you know, I, you know I, I really believe in you know, what's, what's said here. You may disagree, but the traditional advertising is no longer effective. Uh, you know, you will have been watching uh, yesterday some fantastic presentations and, you know, we're talking about blockchain now, we're talking about not the traditional billboards, but, you know, the survival billboard that was shown yesterday, the presentation of the guy from McCann. Uh, uh, and, you know, when you're talking about the video, com the, the television commercials, it's not about, you know, uh, selling cars anymore, but it's about uh, uh, essentially creating uh, a new storytelling. And who is, was usually in charge of storytelling? It was PR people. So now the advertising, uh, in order also maybe, you know, to survive and adapt uh, to the new world, the advertising people are also kind of uh, moving into the PR uh, domain. Uh, uh, some, you know, uh, you know, some, uh, some basic numbers about, uh, again, uh, you know, what's going on you know, in the digital world. Uh, you know, more and more computers have the ad block. Uh, so, you know, for the you know, internet advertising, it's also you know, a different story now. Uh, but with the growth of the social media, uh, obviously, so the, the social media users, uh, it's, it's amazing that, you know, more and more consumers trust the opinion of other internet users. Um, I will probably, you know, skip this slide quick, quickly again with some uh, statistics about the current use, but again, meaning that we have more and more data available than ever before to inform our decision making. So, uh, you know, today uh, we are most influenced by people. And, uh, you know, of course, you know, the biggest influencer for everybody is say, your mother or father or grandmother, uh, depending, uh, but, but also the you know, people who are similar to us, who complement us, uh, you know, with the areas of authority. 
And uh, you know, despite uh, the fact that you know all of the you know fake news and you know uh, uh, the you know Trump uh, and, and everything, uh, you know, still more than 80 percent of consumers saying that they will buy product recommended by friends or family, uh, with two-thirds saying that they trust other consumer opinion as well. Uh, so again, uh, every, you know, out of every computer, uh, you know, uh, everybody is talking about that you can't trust anybody now, but people are sort of continuing to trust other people, and I think this is good. Uh, so what's the, inf uh, you know, what's the influencer's power? Uh, we are, uh, 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 first of all, it's, you know, the thought leadership. Uh, they, they drive awareness, uh, they, you know, stimulate conversation, uh, you know, they uh, create engaging and unique content. Uh, they even uh, can lead consumer to purchase, even though it's not, you know, the core, uh, the, you know, the core idea. Uh, you know, it's you know, I, I, you know, in my in my opinion, the most important things are you know thought leadership, you know, the stakeholder engagement, and essentially improving the brand reputation. Of course, we know many stories when you know if things are done wrong, uh, the social media can quickly ruin the brand's reputation. But uh, I think the idea, the idea is that if you do it right, you do have uh, uh, you know good chances that uh, you know you will actually improve it, and. Uh, Influencers are, uh, you know, the, the, the gateway to target and influence the behavioral change. And not just, we're not talking about just brand. Uh, we're talking about B2B, uh, we're talking about business, we're talking about corporate reputations. And, uh, of course, you know, they use different uh, uh, kinds of uh, uh, influencers, but, uh, 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 you know, essentially it's, you know, the, the whole story. So it's not just... Uh, you know, uh, something, you know, to substitute TV commercial, you know, uh, many, you know uh, marketing, uh, uh, you know, food products or, you know, something, you know, a G brand. Uh, so how do we find the right influencer? Uh, again, based on our understanding of it and based on the fact that, okay, we do believe that it's about PR and it's about uh, influence, uh, and about the, the, the reputation. Uh, well, first of all, of course, we need to set up the objectives. Uh, but then uh, we go into research, because without research, we do not know really, uh, you know, uh, for the audience discovery and segmentation, we don't know, you know, who we're talking about. Uh, we need to check the relevance, uh, and it's here it's really important, the validation and mapping. Uh, uh, because, again, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really important to, you know, if those influencers that you're about to select, you know, for your brand, for your company, for your product, are they relevant? Uh, you know, you build relationships, you engage uh, with influencers, uh, and, uh, you know, and then essentially you execute the program, you reach out, you co-create, uh, and uh, as a result, uh, you know, get, you know, what you, you know, what you're willing to do so. Uh, the, 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 you know, influencers, you know, as, as we were saying at the beginning, they all, they all come in very, you know, different shapes and colors. Uh, and uh, uh, essentially, again, as I said, you know, the biggest influencer is your mother, uh, but then uh, it goes, you know, very broadly, and, uh, you know, th th there are some, you know, types, of some of the faces of influencers here in the green, uh, and essentially it can, you know, involve anything from industry experts to academia, you know, to celebrities, to internet media, you know, employees uh, or executives of a company, everybody, essentially. And then, uh, you know, it can, the relationships can be, you know, paid. It can be through a partnership or can be not be, or, 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 or would be sort of a non-paid basis. And uh, initially, I was thinking that, you know, to put it sort of in the matrix, that, okay, these people are always, you know, come as paid, and these people, you know, will always come as, as free. Uh, but it doesn't work like that, uh, int interestingly enough. Because even celebrities, you know, people who would, you know, normally charge, you know, sometimes tens if not hundreds of thousands of, you know, dollars or euros uh, for uh, some engagement or for, for a joint project, in my experience, in my, you know, in my memory, they've been involved in some projects completely free of charge. Uh, you know, we had, uh, if you find the right cause, if you find the right button to click, 
uh, and if you find the right, in, in, essentially the right influencer to approach, you know, we had, uh, uh, you know, an idea, uh, we had a project, you know, for the United Nations uh, in, in Moscow, and there was, uh, you know, a task to raise uh, a flag on the Red Square in Moscow, uh, which is a protected area, you know, with the police or the, you know, KGB officers all around, but, you know, to, to raise a flag to support one of the United Nations causes. And, okay, we, our government relations people have worked on to, you know, secure that, you know, we actually have the right to raise this flag, but then how do you generate awareness? How do you invite journalists to write about, okay, we need some influencers, we need some celebrities. And, uh, and because this was uh, an, uh, an, an, a non-paid, so that this was a CSR course, uh, essentially we're reaching out to people and asking whether you'd be interested to work for free on this project. And so initially, we, and then we ended up finding a very well-known Russian uh, uh, figure skater who agreed to go on the records. He participated in a television program and he raised the flag on the Red Square. He was then hanging for a week. So this is just one example. Uh, and obviously, working with influencers, there are numerous different scenarios. It can be more topical. It can be, you know, something, you know, very short term, or it can be, you know, a long-term partnership. And um, again, uh, you know, the, this comes in very different, um, you know, shapes, and it comes in very different. Uh, uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, and it comes in, you know, very different scenarios. So, uh, like, I, I, I will. You know, show you, know, you know, two or three different you know, scenarios with some cases. Like, you know, one is when opinion leaders uh, you know, are used as content creators about your brand. And I know it sounds kind of tricky and scary that you would you know, allow somebody to go as kind of intimately close you know, to your brand, to your company. But uh, uh, there, there is some interesting numbers I found is that 76% you know, of bloggers state that the freedom of, uh, in creativity is the key reason why they agree to work with brands. Not money. Money is important, of course, as well. But the, but the freedom of creativity. Uh, second is 67% are excited about competing with other bloggers. Again, we saw this yesterday uh, in a fantastic case about Xbox, you know, uh, the the fran you know, franchise when you know different people uh, uh, you know making uh, you know the different colors uh, you know Xbox devices uh, exactly, and the people were competing uh, against each other. And, and finally, even the clients, uh, you know, over 50% of the clients, the marketing professionals, are saying that they believe that the influencer-generated uh, content is perceived better, not, not, not the advertising. Uh, there is one example. I don't know uh, well, how many of you have followed, you know, what was going on around the World Cup, you know, this summer in Russia. Uh, but, you know, it's one of our clients, Adidas, uh, and... Uh, uh, they had very, you know, interesting task uh, because Adidas was one of the key sponsors of the FIFA World Cup, and uh, they needed to maximize exposure. Yet, believe it or not, Russians were not very supportive of their own domestic team uh, because Russia's football team was not performing uh, very well up until very close, you know, to the World Cup. And so, how do you uh, make sure that you know the the, the football? Uh, uniform uh, and the football, you know, products that you know Adidas is, you know, creating are actually sold uh, in a country that doesn't believe in its own team. And so, uh, well, luckily, then later, you know, when Russia's team started to perform better than expected, it also helped. But one of the things that we did actually, uh, we involved some uh, opinion makers, some influencers, and uh, so Adidas Global uh, World Cup theme was creativity is the answer. And so we personalized it uh, with the help of influencers uh, uh, who, uh, and we gave them almost total freedom of expression and asked them to customize team jerseys, Russia team jerseys. Uh, uh, and there were several influencer guys. On the left, I don't know if you've heard the Russia's uh, uh, you know, pop band Leningrad. Uh, uh, so this is you know, the frontliner uh, you know, who you know, did one of the designers, designs. There's another guy. Uh, Pakras Lampas, you know, who was, you know, very popular, um, you know, designer in Russia, he did another one. And, you know, believe it or not, uh, we achieved uh, six times our KPI goals. And uh, uh, most importantly, the brand achieved an impressive 14% growth in sales. 
Uh, and it's really important as well because quite often when uh, you know, we look at uh, you know, the fantastic ideas, when we look at the fantastic programs that the marketing and PR people are creating, we forget about measurement and we forget about how this uh, goes back into uh, the company's bottom line. Here, this was one uh, you know, fantastic example when uh, creative ideas actually not just you know, helped to secure some media coverage and some great results in the newspapers and excited you know, bloggers, but also uh, fantastic sales. Okay, you might ask, what this car commercial is doing here? Maybe not an ideal commercial. Well, it's not a commercial. It's a blogger's video. It was created by bloggers, uh, uh, free of, you know, completely free of charge. They didn't you know, ask any money, which they then used. What happened? Uh, it's another uh, influencer uh, engagement uh, that we did for you know, our client company called Mini. Uh, and, uh, well, you know, it, you, you won't surprise anybody who was organizing the, you know, media or bloggers, you know, farm trips or, um, you know, the, the, the road trips like this one. And uh, obviously, uh, you know, we looked at it from a different perspective. So we made sure that it's not just a random uh, collection of uh, bloggers or journalists would go, you know, to another, you know, mini organized road trip, uh, you know, to test new cars but the, only the people that know each other well that are friends would go into the trip. So the, all, all of them are individual bloggers and, and vloggers. Uh, but because we were very careful on selecting, so this research stage that we did, uh, uh, it's not that they only uh, you know, enjoyed you know, traveling together, but they were actually close friends. And they so much liked the whole thing that they created the video that they started to post on their, on, their, on their feeds. Again, completely free of charge. We had no budget for creating this kind of videos. Uh, another scenario, it's not our client, but also I, I thought it was an interesting case. Uh, Raffaello, I don't know if you're familiar with Raffaello Suites. Uh, uh, it's, um, you know, the company is um, uh, positioning itself as kind of romantic gift uh, and the brand the traditional talks about love and, uh, you know, Valentine's Day, this kind of things. What they did, actually, they uh, invited some opinion leaders, they invited influencers to become part of the brand's team in order to tell the influencers about the company. Again, a uh, very kind of risky approach, but because they have ca very carefully selected somebody, uh, they essentially this person uh, legally hijacked uh, the Raffaello Instagram account uh, uh, for, for some time, and uh, so, you know, started, uh, um, you know, to, you know, uh, to share some ideas, you know, sh share some photographs, and essentially uh, uh, collaborating with the audience, immediately raising uh, 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 the number of people interested and in, in, involved and engaged, you know, to a very high level. Uh, here is uh, one example, one project that I really, really like, and I would like uh, for you to first uh, see the video. Uh, it's uh, you know, short list on the Cannes, uh, you know, Cannes Festival, and also it's recipient of the Sabre Awards uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Europe. Uh, and I will explain why I think that this is the essence of in, uh, influencer relations as I see it. If you could please turn the video on. 2014 was a challenging year for internet businesses in Russia, especially Google, under pressure for being seen as promoting the global web at the expense of Russian language and culture. We wanted to show that this wasn't true and that the internet could actually preserve and promote Russia's cultural heritage by paying tribute to one of its legendary literary heroes, Leo Tolstoy. Russia has one of the greatest literary traditions in the world. We saw an opportunity to celebrate that tradition by staging a live continuous online reading of Tolstoy's classic novel, Anna Karenina, the first ever live continuous reading of a book online. 
Все счастливые семьи похожи друг на друга. Каждая несчастливая семья несчастлива по-своему. Karenin Alive Edition united over 700 readers from 13 time zones, taking turns reading excerpts from the book streamed live on Google Plus and YouTube. Readers were connected via Google Plus Hangouts and included the Russian President's Press Secretary, the Minister of Culture, popular actors, athletes, singers, bloggers and other personalities. As soon as one finished, they were immediately followed by another in a different location, in all taking roughly 36 hours to read the entire book. To date, Karen and Alive edition has received millions of video views from 106 countries, generated more than 1,000 media articles worldwide and been widely acclaimed for reviving sales of Russian literature. Through the project, Google has shown that classic literature is indeed a universal language and that Internet technology is capable of uniting people across the world over a book. Thank you. Uh, uh, well, I have seven more minutes. I, I understand I, my time is off. Will you allow me? Uh, well, hopefully, yes. <laughs> uh, so why, why I think this, this video and this project is important. Uh, uh, you know, Google was you know, facing at this moment you know, a very um, you know, tough problem, essentially, permission to operate. Uh, because you know there was you know significant attention to company from the regulators, you know from the authorities, from uh, uh, you know the uh, uh, you know from you know president, presidential administration and everything, uh, because this was about the time when uh, there was some you know conflicts globally. There's some accusations that you know the CIA and FBI essentially have access you know to you know Google uh, you know data, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and you know, obviously, you know, we were trying, you know, to use every opportunity, you know, to show how important is internet, how important is Google for the Russian economy and for Russian business. Um, and we would go into one direction, and they would say, no, 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 you cannot touch this. And say, okay, well, let's do something with the school kids. No, 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 you cannot touch the school kids. And uh, you know, very soon we kind of pretty much run out of topics, you know, to talk about. Uh, and here is one story. Okay, well, let's try to do culture. Uh, okay, well, culture is kind of e easy enough and, you know, should, should be no problem. And so, you know, we came up, uh, it was a, a joint project of four agencies. We came up with an idea of this, you know, reading marathon, uh, which was essentially, sol uh, you know, solving the, uh, the task of the Google's marketing uh, to, you know, showcase, you know, the products, you know, the PR, uh, you know, to raise the awareness of some products and, you know, and, and help with reputation, but most importantly, government relations. Uh, uh, and uh, all of the people, I mean, the book was read by, you know, some ordinary people as well, obviously, but we had a total of about maybe, you know, 40 or 50 influencers, ranging, as you've seen, from the Minister of Culture and the president, you know, President's Press Secretary, um, you know, to some, you know, actors and sports people, you know, everybody, you know, bloggers, you know, famous, you know, you know, uh, um, you know music stars, every, everybody. And uh, every uh, stakeholder, every influencer had a particular button. Um, and uh, uh, just one example, you know, for several months we were trying to reach a particular governor, um, you know, to organize a meeting to talk about some joint project, and we couldn't get through. The two days after this was shown on the national TV as, you know, some news about this reading marathon, we received a call from the governor's office, why I'm not invited. Let's meet and talk. So this is what you know, influencers can, can also do in terms of public affairs and government relations, believe it or not. Uh, obviously, there are some issues uh, that we have to talk about that surround uh, 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 influencer, uh, uh, influencer marketing. And because it's a new area and you know, things that you know, related to disclosure and lack of transparency, uh, you know, manipulation, there is some data that one out of four influencers in the UK are involved in some sort of a fraud. Uh, and it's, you know, it's dramatic numbers. Uh, obviously, behavior and decency, because you know, we're, it's really important that the values of a brand must be aligned with values of an influencer. And then you know, the smaller print, you know, the contracting, you know, uh, the content, the boosting, obviously the measurement, which is extremely important, the data privacy. So these things, they all 
you know, come uh, and, and create issues for the, you know, for the industry, but still the industry continues to grow despite of the fact. Now, I will quickly you know, uh, go through you know, a couple of more slides and you know, then finishing. Essentially, so uh, there are some do's and don'ts uh, uh, when you talk about influencer marketing. And uh, uh, I will not read those, you know, you can you know, do it yourself, but I just want to say that, you know, this, this summer, some of the biggest companies like Unilever uh, started to raise voice and fighting, uh, the, you know, essentially the fake uh, uh, followers, you know, the bots and uh, the things that uh, essentially undermine the industry. Uh, uh, again, you have to be smart because, uh, and you, it must not be scripted, because otherwise it results in a, some, you know, very uh, awkward cases like it was in September of this year when uh, there was Listerine involved, uh, UK uh, influential, but it was so plastic and so awkward and so unnatural that people just essentially immediately started, uh, you know, to bash it and say, you know, guys, we don't need this kind of, you know, uh, you know programs. And essentially influencers are easily uh, damaging their own reputation when they get involved in this kind of things. Uh, uh, Interestingly enough, uh, and this was one of the questions that I received from Ivana when I was preparing this presentation, is, you know, was it that okay that the, you know, the influencers will be working with different brands at the same time? It's not only okay, but it's welcome, because people, believe it or not, uh, do not uh, uh, trust those influencers that just work with one brand. Uh, or just with you know one company, um, and uh, uh, they do you know we really need you know to select people who work with you know several brands at the time. Of, of course, making sure they're not competing with each other. But this is one example: a Russian uh, influencer, um, you know, who is uh, you know working with you know hotels, you know luggage. Here is you know wearing the Adidas shoes uh, or something like that, and again receiving you know tons of you know positive coverage. So. Um, you know, if, uh, as we reviewed this whole, you know, story, long story, you know, uh, influencer marketing is about building relationships. And so who builds relationships? It's PR. So essentially, and this is, you know, going to be my, you know, last slide today, and, you know, sorry for, you know, taking extra time. Uh, if you try to look at, you know, the system, you know, from the point of view of trust and control, uh, uh, well, PR is used to working with, you know, third parties with limited control over content, uh, but producing results that have high trust levels. And advertising is used to having high control levels, but limited degrees of trust. Where the influencer marketing will move uh, closer to PR or closer to advertising, it's probably your choice, your, you know, your call, but I, something tells me that we are more into the kind of lower left uh, area that is you know, high in trust and low in control, because that's what the consumers are looking for. And uh, I think that this is the battle the PR can win. Thank you. <laughs>